So we are now recording. Um, thank you so much, Paul and Marlena, for joining us today. I'm really excited to be getting to this point and going over this information. And um, Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us. And we should probably start the meeting. I know most people know, but I don't know that Sam does. So Chris, I'm sorry, I know you've talked about this already, but do you wanna make one final main big announcement? <laughs> Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I have taken a position with the state, uh, uh, Department of Green Community or the Division of Green Communities. I'm going to be the Western Mass Regional Green Communities Coordinator. So it's with mixed emotions that I'm leaving the city. I'm very wedded to all the stuff that people are doing, um, that this group is doing and others. Um, so I'll give me a call if anybody needs assistance, you know, even after the job. <laughs> Conflict of interest, I'll have to deal with it, but I don't think this would ever be a conflict of interest. Um, uh, yep, there you go. <laughs> so, Chris, when when is your last meeting with us, or when when does that new position start, or when are you at least leaving this position? I guess that's um, what I should ask. Uh, the plan is for me to leave this position uh, on December sixteenth would be the last day, but I'll be using up some personal time, so I probably won't be working that day. Um, uh, so it might be earlier that week, but that might still, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, that might still flex a bit. The official start date with the state will be January 3rd. Okay, so you're starting January 3rd there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this um, phone number is Tom joining us. So, so Tom, just to spare Chris saying it for like the fifth time, um, Unless he wants to tell you, do you already know about Chris? Chris's big news. I just can you hear Did me? You hear? Yep. Okay, good. Um, I I I just gathered it. Congrats, Chris. Um, thank you, Tom. <laughs> okay, great. So I think um I think we have everybody here who's going to be here today. So um, I don't have minutes because I'm working with um a high school student who's learning how to. Um, to take minutes through an advanced or uh, learning project that she's doing. So um, I'm, I'm being giving her some, you know, some leeway with that. So um, doesn't mean that Darcy, we don't want you to take minutes today if you can. <laughs> but um, she's, she's working on one of the sets where you were absent, I think at the last meeting. So she's working on that set. And then there was a set back in September um, that she's pretty much nearly done with, but I just want to go over them with her. So, um, and I don't, I only get her, you know, she's only here like for an hour once or twice a week and she's only been here for, uh, a few times so far. So we'll review the minutes at another time. So that's just one agenda item. Um, and then, sorry, um, I guess Chris gave us a big update. So I think we can, um, I don't think I have any other updates unless, Chris, do you have any updates um, from the town counselor, uh, the legal counsel for both um, Amherst and Northampton? All I can say is I, I keep reaching out to Alan and Alan keeps reaching out to Rick. And um, I, I don't wanna put the blame on Rick because you know it's, it's kind of intermittent. It takes a while, I reach out a couple of times and he reaches out and they haven't, they, as far as I know, they haven't connected yet. Last time I reached out, I, I did copy people on the last one saying, you know, maybe what we want to do instead is the entire group get together and go through the JPA um, together. And that might be the best at this point. Um, instead of having the, the lawyers come to agreement first, just everybody just go through it. But that, when I suggested that, Alan instead reached out to Rick. So he's, he kind of implied he would rather... Um, work with the, uh, the attorneys together first. Okay, yeah. right. So um, so this is pretty much the same pattern and holding pattern that we've been in since April because what you're doing is exactly what I was doing and I, I don't know how to move them along any faster at this point. Uh -huh. So um, I may re reach out to Rick uh, directly myself too. And if not, I think I might ask Paul. Um, at this point, because of where we are with moving the aggregation along, and the need to get this in place before that happens. I feel like, you know, it's kind of a critical point here. So 
Um, and I'm also concerned, and, and Paul and Marlene, I'm glad you're both with us today, um, just in terms of once that, and because you have more experience with aggregations, and I know most communities kind of work independently um, on their aggregations, but because we're a group um, and we need administration uh, to sort of launch the JPE, like how does that, how will that work if we put forth the CCA to the DPU, and I know it's going to take a while, but you had said it would be best if the JPE was in existence, but in terms of administratively, like, are there things that have to be done at that point that we need, you know, we need the, the JPE to be functioning, to be convened and functioning at that point? So um, that's a really interesting question. So um, I really, I'm th just thinking off the top of my head at this stage, not really. The key thing is, I mean, just the key reason to have the JPE in place by the time of the filing with the Department of Public Utilities is what will matter a lot to the Department of Public Utilities is what's the entity that's submitting this plan? Is it the JPE that's submitting the plan or is it the three communities operating under a memorandum of understanding? And that's an issue that matters to them. So if we can, it would be good to have the JPE in place by then. It's not the end of the world if we don't. We could file under the MOU and then revise later, and that's been been done with no fuss. But if if we had it in place ahead of time, that's better. In terms of administrative action, really the only things the things that have to happen from here, I think, can be done all done without a, a JPE that has any administrative capabilities yet. And the reasons are from where we are today. The next big step is a public hearing in, in putting the plan out for comment in each of the communities and having a public hearing in each community. That has to be done in each community anyway. So you don't really need the JPE for that. Each, you know, each community could could would be the, the driver there. Um, and then in terms of filing the, the final documents with the Department of Public Utilities when they're ready, all we need there is just the whoever entity is filing them has to dis decide to do it has to tell us we as an entity have decided we want you to file this plan and it's up to you what process that involves usually it's just someone speaking for the town tells us yes we've decided please file the plan so you could do that as the three communities but i think the jpe even if it's in in place but doesn't have administrative capabilities that's just its governing board which i imagine is you guys just deciding and and giving us a direction so um that's a long way around to saying I don't think the absence of administrative capability on the part of the JPE is a problem at is a problem at this stage. So would that it doesn't require would it require signatures from the three communities on behalf like so the JPE essentially is the executives of each community just at least administratively at that point. Yes, or well, or however the JPE is structured. So the JP probably says right. We have a governing board. Our governing board is established in way, right? It's probably the chief executives of the three communities or however you do it. Those entities would just have to agree together that the JPE wants this plan filed. So they don't file, they don't sign the plan documents or anything. They just need a way to make a decision and so give us a direction. So they could do that, you know, in a meeting. They could probably even do it. Uh, I don't know the JPE rules, but they could maybe even do it less formally than that. Okay. So I put together, uh, started putting together a list of what the JPE has to do once it's once it, once the agreement is signed. You know, what are, what are the immediate tasks? I don't remember if I've sent that out to people, um, but I, I I agree. I mean, it fits right with Paul saying, you know, what the first things to do is to form the board, and once you form the board, then you have a decision making. Um, and it makes sense that that's should go pretty quick and clean. That shouldn't be hard. Yeah, I just so it's just a matter of timing is all I'm concerned mm -hmm. about because I don't know when they're when Rick and Alan are going to get this together enough to for us to then get signatures. And if Paul is wanting to move forward um, on our behalf mid December, I'm just concerned about timing because I don't know when mm -hmm. that board is going to be able to convene, right? Because even if we become a JPE, the executives still have to identify who are going to be 
the on the board of directors and uh, ostensibly it, we, i would think it would be us at least for now so um okay so does anyone else have any questions around that jp i just paul i'm sorry to sort of thrust you into that conversation but having your expertise is helpful and, and i can just make an addition with regard to the timing so before the dpu filing you need to do these public hearings and the public comment periods in the communities so that's 30 days from when that starts so that means it it wouldn't really be the 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 dpu filing is probably in january would be the earliest you could you could do it given that requirement to have public public comment opportunity okay and when you say public hearing um do you mean just a sort of a public meeting or is it something that the council has to preside over i'm sorry yes just a public meeting so it's okay. not it's 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 really just a form it's a it's a public presentation of the plan it gets yep. noticed like a public meeting maybe like one of your meetings but it's mm -hmm. not it's not a, a meeting of the governing board okay okay hey this is tom i i'm feeling like i mean just to be provocative i, I don't know what's going on with northampton are they part of this or not um you know it's it seems like it's you know, we're, we're coming up with all these ways to work around the lack of response that's been now, what, half a year? So I, I do feel like we need to escalate this a little bit. So, I, and I, I just want to, you know, on behalf of Northampton, because I don't feel like it's been them, I think um, our respective legal counsels, including Rick, at various times have been somewhat non-responsive, um, you know, on Alan did have surgery, so we're going to give him some slack <laughs> around is the fact that he had knee surgery. So I think, um, you know, it's been, it's, sometimes it's been Rick and sometimes it's been Alan. So at this point right now, I think it's Alan has reached out to Rick and Rick didn't respond. But I know that Rick tried to reach out to Alan like two months ago. So I think I'm just going to maybe try to reach out to Rick myself to see if I can um, prompt him along so that we can move this forward. Um, yeah. I, I, I think at this point, it, it, you know, time for the executives to say, this is top priority. We know we've asked you to do other things. Now's the time for this. Yeah. yeah. So, so towards that, Andrew, um, uh, I'll be meeting on Monday uh, <clears throat> with my, you know, the director of central services and the mayor is asked to, to be part of that meeting because it's kind of, how do I hand off all my, my stuff? And I will bring it up at that meeting. So the mayor will know that this group needs to have action from the lawyers. That'll be an opportune time to bring it up. And I think Stephanie, you, you said yeah. you, might go, you might go to Paul. Yeah, I can go to Paul. That's not a problem. He'll, he, you know, he's, um, he's pretty good about, about that if I ask him and tell him sort of where we are and that it's a critical juncture and we really need Rick to respond. Right. So. so we're all on the same page. Yep. I am gonna give Rick a call though, first. I'm in, I'm gonna do both. If I don't hear from him, I'll ask Paul. So, okay, um, I'd like to move us along then. Um, so moving to the our discussion and our next steps, I guess we're gonna start with the um, outreach and education plan. And Marlene, I don't know if you have a, an updated version to share or if you've just incorporated the last comments we had. Yeah, I think the, I think you have the most recent version. I don't okay. think there's any, did you send? I guess I thought I had sent back. Um, I think I did. Let me see if I've got that. But maybe it, did I? Did you send something after I sent the last version to you? I can't remember. It? I can't remember. Hold on. I'm just um, opening what I sent everybody. So I've been. Um, I was out of the office all day yesterday, and so I feel like I'm a little behind the eight ball here. Um, so the yeah, I think the version I I sent everybody was the version that you responded to us, to our latest comments, yep. so. It's dated 11-3-22 with my initials after it. Is that the one that you sent out? Um, let's see, yes. Yep. Okay, yep, that's the latest one I have too. Okay, great. So um, I just wanna make sure that everybody is okay with that then, is there any, anything, um, anyone, wanted to comment on or add or before we finalize this? Helen is good with it. Okay. I'm good with it. 
Chris. Oh, you're muted, Chris. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. And everyone else? Okay. I can't see others, so I'm just going to assume that we're good. I think we finally have our completed outreach and education plan. So great progress. Congratulations. Thank you, Marlena. <laughs> Excellent. That piece is done. Yep. All right. Then to move on to the draft aggregation plan. Can I just ask a question about the, the draft? Um, uh, I saw a lot of additional red text that was crossed out, and that confused me. Uh, and, I didn't know who put in the red text and who crossed it out. Which, which document? The, I think Mar uh, Darcy's referring to the CCA, and I believe Paul, um, do you want me to share my screen? Yes, that would be great. And and I think at a at a high level, Darcy, the, exactly what ha what happened is, I sent a draft. You folks added some text to the draft, which appeared as red. Oh. I reviewed your additions and made some um, some proposed edits on the additions. So that would, in some cases, would show red. I think would well actually how it appears as the colors is always mysterious, but <laughs> so some things that were added then being my Ooh. recommendation would be to not add them so they would show as crossed out. I think. Okay, so do we want to just go through? Let's start um, with this first. So, so Paul, you're okay with this phrase? You think we might get some pushback, but. We might, but I think if we do, it won't be a big problem. They'll just did we just say take it out? Um, but I, I I don't think they will. I think they'll leave it in. But I and I don't think there's any harm to to trying. Okay. And then you just added this additional. Um, so what's in red here is just what we had suggested, and you included. I just want to be clear as well. This red this summer for uh, support right, for greenhouse gas emission reductions. Phrase now, yeah. So, um, yes, I think that's that's fine. I think that's fine there. That's fine. Okay. There. All right. Great. And so the fact that the the options that we listed were not included is still we were still assuming that they're. Um, uh, potentially doable, we just are not specifying them. Is that correct? Um, well, a little bit, I think. And then I think the like the main ones, if maybe if we could scroll down a little bit, we could look at these specifically. So I think we're all good up until here, or is what I took out just not appearing here at all? I'll scroll down more. So you guys had a whole list of things. So yeah, maybe just three three items. Let's see. I see. So I th I think. Right. So the, I think the way to see them, I believe your proposed additions were in a comment and which was a great way to do it. And I think if you scroll back up a little bit, Stephanie, I think we can get them back on the screen. So if we find that comment. Um, is that the one, I think the one up here? Yes. And if you hit the down arrow in the comment, yep. there we go. Then, then we'll see, or maybe it's the comment above, maybe. Sorry. Keep. I'm sorry. Keep going up. Yeah, I think that's yeah, it's this one here. So there's a little down arrow there right next to JPE at the bottom. Yep. Uh, JPE at the bottom. Um, right above my name in the line above my name, all the way to the right. Oh, yep. So I, I see it. It's just arrow. hard. Yeah. Yeah. There, there we go. go. Perfect. So that's, these are the items, right? So 
you would suggest putting these in the plan as specific greenhouse gas emission reduction strategies. Um, I've suggested not putting those in the plan because I think they would create a lot of consternation at the Department of Public Utilities. Um, in terms of whether, so I guess mostly we just be, be silent on these proposed additions and then try to evolve the program in this direction. Um, trying to think of how, how best to raise this topic or why some of these things would um, create consternation with the Department of Public Utilities. So C is a good one to talk about. That's a, that's a really good example. So C on the right there says, um, just kind of provide general support for development of new greenhouse gas reduction, new projects that would reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So from the DPU's perspective, I mean, what that sounds like a lot is the, the, the program would collect money and then the program would use that money to support projects, so, so in general to support projects, but without necessarily a direct tie between those projects and the customers who are participating in the program. And, and that's a tough line with the DPU because they view these programs as they're, you know, they're kind of electricity supply programs. It can be used to promote the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and the development in of new greenhouse projects by in one very specific way, which is you offer a product through the program customers purchase that product, it goes to the, it goes to the generator. So, and the customer gets the output of that generator. So there's a direct line between the customer's payment, the, the project you're trying to incentivize and some specific benefit back to the customer, the recs from that project. That's the way these programs can for sure operate. What they can't do is just at the other extreme, collect a bunch of money and then just give that money to a renewable energy developer because we all support additional renewable energy. The DP would say that's not tied closely enough to the benefits received by the program participants. So you can't use the money in that way. It's got to be more specifically tied to this, this program and benefits to the recipients. So these might be programs that we could put under the JPE instead of the CCA. Exactly correct. That's that's an extremely important point there, which is doesn't mean none of this has anything to do with what the JPE can do. The JPE can do all sorts of stuff, but for the for the CCA, you're limited to what the DPU would allow, and that's going to really limit you to things that are very closely tied to benefits received by program participants. So so wait, to, go ahead, Chris. I just want to say that um, I think the biggest use that we can get from the CCA for these general greenhouse gas emission pieces is if it can at some point help fund or partially fund a staff person whose aim would be outward focus and it would run the CCA, it would help kind of come up with how do we use money, you know, how, how do we use things that DPU are okay with through the CCA. And at the same time, that person also has got some responsibility to just running more JPE programs, larger programs. So, that, I mean, that's, so I would ask Paul, that's kind of like the highest priority that I could think of um, here because the programs are gonna develop. It's really hard to say how the programs themselves are gonna develop, um, but to have someone who could be spending some time towards that um, and have the DPU, DPU okay with that. Um, I think you've said in the past that that would be appropriate. Um, correct. So it's it's definitely, um, and we we get to that late. That specific thing comes up later on in the plan. It's not in this part here. Not, not to say we shouldn't talk about it, but just in case people are wondering why aren't, why aren't we seeing that on the page? That's on the page. It's later down. Um, to answer your question, Chris, the the DPU has many times approved the use of funds collected through a CCA program to fund some, a portion of the cost of a staff person. That staff person has to work on the program. And to a certain extent, the, the amount that the program dollars contribute to the staff person's salary, et cetera, 
needs to bear some relationship to the percentage of the person's time that is spent on the program. But for this purpose, you can think of the program in an expansive way. You can certainly cover general administrative time that's related to the program. So you can, you can cover a whole bunch of a, of a person's salary and many communities do covers, you know, a good chunk of the salary of a person who has responsibility for the CCA, but also other responsibilities. Okay, I know we've talked about this many times. Um, I feel pretty clear about how we can use it for that piece. Um, I think it was more just the general um, to my note here, I think, and to maybe Darcy's point is just like, is there a way to, without getting specific, to say that we want greenhouse gas emissions reductions to be the driver? I think that's, I think that was kind of the essence of what, and Darcy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was kind of the essence of what you really wanted to make sure was clear in moving this forward. Am I right? Yeah, I, well, it looks like we're replacing um, a lot of language with emissions reduction as the the driver anyway, right? Mm -hmm. um, but no, I'm I'm okay as long as this is, you know, can be part of the JPE. Okay. I mean, and I think we knew that, I thought that was kind of the point of the JPE was to be able to do all this. I have a question um, about the benefits to participants. Um, for example, if we decided um, to do something for low-income people specifically um, to reduce the, uh, the burden on their electricity bills, is would that be okay with DPU or does does anything that the CCA does have to benefit all participants equally? Um, that's a that's a really good question. I would say, um, and the answer might vary a little bit from case to case, but I, I I would think that support for low income folks is an area where you can push the envelope a little bit. You know, no one no one is going to fuss, and there's a great. Well, I'd say there are two themes in, in Massachusetts electricity regulation and the CCAs fall under that. One theme is everyone gets an opportunity to participate in benefits equally, you know, to the extent that they contribute, they have an opportunity to benefit. And though it's okay to carve out extra money for people with particular needs. So both of those somewhat contradictory principles are principles that underlie utility regulation in general and CCA is part of that overall scheme. So as an example, if you wanted to use CCA funds, well, there, I think there are a bunch of ways you could use it to help low-income folks I'll, without getting into a whole bunch of examples. I think there are a bunch of ways you could. Thank One you. question I have that might be related. Um, when we were talking about our four choices um, and we were having this discussion about what to call it. And we were at one point came up with, you know, brown, um, you know, brown option or whatever. And, and there was some concern that because people who are really um, economically constrained are going to be probably having to use this option. Um, my question is, well, then how is that? How is this then an equitable approach if people who are economically strapped um, are forced basically to have to go to the budget option um, if they can't afford other options or greener options. So that's my question. And is there something that we can do through programming I mean, in some ways, I almost wonder, do we, like, do we have to have a budget option? Like, could we have a budget option that's more like, I don't know, could, I don't know, can the 100% green be actually available to everybody? And not, you know, at a, 
I guess I'm trying to figure out a way, like how do we how do we do this to, so that it's equitable to people who want to be able to have greener energy mm -hmm. and can't afford it? Um, so this is this is this is interesting. I think there I think there may be some possibilities here. Um, so the just to to think out loud for a second. So the budget option will be the lowest cost option. You'll have some people who choose that because their um, you know, financial resources are limited, and some people who pick that just because they want to their financial resources are not limited, but they don't want to pay extra money for renewables. So you'll have those two categories of folks in the budget option. It, it might be possible and would be kind of like one possible creative thing you could do would be to say for people in the budget option, but who are on the utilities low income rate. So we know they've qualified as a low income customer. We could probably find a way such that additional recs would get attributed to those folks or I'd have to think through the mechanics, but conceptually what would happen is that everybody else, if you wanted the, the people on the low income rate to get the extra recs, say the hundred percent product, but without paying any extra, any paying the full price of that product instead of paying the budget price, what you would have to have is have everybody else would have to buy a little bit extra recs, and then those extras would get allocated to the low income folks. Um, I think for this purpose, we don't need to work it all the way through and wouldn't want to go into that level of detail in the plan. I think what we'd want to do is I'd find a place to put in some language that would authorize you to do that if you were to decide to do it later. So I can I can figure out a place to put that in. So the 100% renewable would actually be 103% renewable. <laughs> exactly right, exactly right. Which is conceptually it's with Rex, but that's just the way the low income financial discount works, but with dollars everybody else pays a little bit more than they would have otherwise, that creates a pool and that pool is used to buy down the cost for certain people who qualify for that assistance. Chris? So I actually don't, I, I'm puzzled. All of a sudden there are two of me and one of them has a hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> is one of them Tom maybe? Yeah, I raised my hand. <laughs> but it says Chris Mason. That's interesting. Oh, because Probably you sent him the link. Great. Oh, thank you. I sent you the link. Okay. <laughs> Chris, you're pushing my elbow up in the air right now. Or I'm pushing <laughs> your elbow up in the there air. There you go. <laughs> uh, Chris, do you have something? Do, do you? I, I know you've. I've raised your hand, but do you have something to say? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I just want to... Um, uh, I'm totally, I, I love the fact that we're focused on this. Thanks, Adele. And we've all brought it up. Um, I, I, on top of everything you shared, Paul, which is definitely the right way to approach this, I think if we were to get a person on board, um, number one, I think there's grant money out there that we can go pursue. Uh, if we had somebody to spend time to do it, you know, this whole ESG movement, we got big Wall Street companies that are looking to help this kind of effort. So I, it would take some snooping, but I think there might be something out there for that. And then the other thing, Paul, I'm wondering, you know, with the new Inflation Reduction Act, there are serious incentives um, with the investment tax credit for renewables that are located in low and moderate income communities, for example. So I'm also hopeful that there will be more um, um, fiscal opportunities to, to make this kind of thing happen ba based on our demographics here in the Valley. That's it. Chris, you can put your hand down now. <laughs> I think you have to, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so um, does anyone else have a question? Because I do, but I want to recognize other people if they have questions first. Okay. 
Um, at the risk of upsetting the apple cart, I just want to sort of throw out because I was at um, an MMA conference, fall conference yesterday at UMass, and I was sitting next to, I think, um, I don't know if it was the town manager of Lexington, perhaps, but they were talking about how they have only 100% green energy option. That's it. So I just wondered why, what, and, and for, from the group too, why we were leaning towards all of these options versus just coming up with a 100% green option that then can be available to um, to other folks, you know, to low income folks. Like if we're doing what Paul just said, couldn't we sort of create programs that sort of have more equity? Um, like why, why would it be necessary to still have the um, standard green as well and the local? Because couldn't our 100% green include local? Like, I guess that's what I'm trying to think, like, does it, ha do they have to be separate categories? And so, Paul, maybe you can answer that. Yes. Yeah, so the, that's a good question. So the reason they would be separate categories is that, that they would have separate prices. So as an example, like your hundred percent green product, if you're assuming that's a 100% class one rec product, that's going to be expensive. It's going to cost more than utility basic service. It's going to cost more than competitive mark prices, you know, options in the marketplace. And so some people will want that, but others folks would say, well, that's too expensive. We don't, we don't want that product. So the, the reason towns offer a variety of different options with different levels of renewables is to give people a choice because different levels of renewables come at, you know, at, at different costs. So it lets people find the, the product that fits their budget and environmental um, goals. Okay. So I only asked because I just, you know, I, like I said, he just brought that up yesterday and I just, it made me think about this a little more. Um, how do so they I've, deal with, uh, Stephanie, did you ask him how they deal with low income um, residents or maybe there aren't any low income residents. Yeah, in <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I didn't. I, I didn't actually ask him that because um, he had sort of mentioned I wasn't necessarily the one having the conversation. He was just talking and I was listening in that particular moment. So I didn't I didn't get to ask him that question. Um, I mean, I, I, I can say we, we're, we work with Lexington, too. Their program's a tiny bit different, actually, from the way um, it was expressed. So they do have a, a budget option with no extra renewables in it. So they do have that option. Mm -hmm. uh, they have 100% in their two other options, which is um, the way they've done it. So they have a, a product that's 100% class one Rex, which is expensive. And then they have their, their equivalent of your standard has some additional class ones, say 20%. And then they get up to a hundred by buying national wind wrecks to make it a hundred. So they have two 100% options with different rec component, you know, rec mm -hmm. contributions and different prices because yeah. of that. Okay. Well, that's crazy. Okay. So, yeah, I, I don't need to, um, backtrack us I just really but I it just brought up a question for me so I just wanted to put it out there while we have you so um okay does anyone else have any other questions uh, yeah I do um, ahead, Adele. I I know that the uh, the new law um <clears throat> allows for aggregations to purchase um electricity directly from offshore wind companies and I'm not sure that that's uh, that we're specifying that in our options here, um, because I what I don't understand is whether um, whether the way the law is written, we would be buying recs from them or by actually buying the electricity from the offshore wind companies, in which case if if the latter. We, we might need to modify our language just a little bit um, to allow for that possibility. 
Um, I think I think any of those options with the offshore wind generators would fit within the the general approach that you have described here. It doesn't speak to it specifically, but um, in, in all cases, you're going to be buying the you know you would be buying electricity and or Rex. Um, and you'll get to choose who you buy them from. You'll work through a, a in sort of in partnership with a retail supplier, but you could say buy all our electricity from here or buy from these offshore wind projects or whatever you want to direct them to do. And that's all those options. The offshore wind thing is new, but it's all of a of a type of the way these programs all the, the programs all work. So I I don't think there's anything about the offshore wind that's different enough that you would need to say anything different here. Thanks. Okay. So Paul, I've got, um, going back to the, uh, having a larger pool paying for green power for um, the low income folks. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of delighted to hear that you could think about where to put that in in here. And I'm also kind of concerned that you have to, um, uh, because you know, we came up with one example and I'm hoping we don't have to put in language in here that allows that type of thing um, all the time. We have to think it all right now. Uh, so is it necessary to put something like that in? Do, I mean, I'm a little dismayed that we have to. Yes. So, um... That's a great point. So, and and what I was thinking of trying to find is a way you could um, say you would do it, and I'm I'm with you. That would cover this specific thing, or might cover other related sorts of ideas. I think the the key from the Department of Public Utilities perspective is you need we need to say in here that you would vary. You would vary the, you might potentially vary the products and the prices by the customer's rate classes. And that's what gives you the opportunity to say something, do something a little different for low income folks. Traditionally, aggregation plans don't say that, that they would vary by rate class, which gives you the opportunity, which so you, there's no opportunity to help out the low income. It's possible I actually even put this that language in here already. I can't remember when I wrote it, but I would make sure that that's in there. And then that, that creates these opportunities to provide something different for low income. It's, as I said, some aggregations haven't done this before, but as long as you can vary in again, and like in DPU speak, not in your speak, but in their world, the key is saying you're going to do something different by rate class. And I'll make, as long as that's in there, I think you're in, you're in good shape for a lot of different things. Okay, gotcha. That, that helps a lot. Thanks. Okay. Paul, um, yeah. could I, I have a question. Um, on the issue of whether or not we are clear about um, being able to, you know, purchase electricity directly, I, th I think the, the definition of our options, the VGE standard green and the VGE 100% green, they both in their definition seem to limit it to the content being from Rex. So could we add that in? Could we just say add in? Do you see what I'm talking about here? Because it says yes. the- um, I do. So that seems to limit them to Rex. Um, and but on the local, it says um, that features electricity and or Rex from generators in or near Alliance member communities. So could we just use that language in all of them? Or is there a reason not to? Um, there may be a reason not to. So, and forgive me for being slow in responding. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to think it through. the The reason plans say 
as this one does, that the additional renewable energy content comes from additional RECs is because under Massachusetts law, you can only claim to have purchased renewable energy if you have the RECs. So if, for example, the Lions, you were, the, you were to buy kilowatt hours from a wind farm, but you weren't buying the associated RECs, then as far as Massachusetts law is concerned, you're not buying renewable energy. Which is maybe a long and whole other discussion, but that's, that's, the, that's the rule. So there isn't anything in here that says, so that's that overlying thing. So that's why the specific mention to Rex. And though embedded in all of these options, you're buying electricity from somebody, right? You're always buying electricity because otherwise you have no electricity product. And you could, you would be free to say, we want to buy that electricity from a wind farm or, or from the offshore wind or from, you know, that gas plant across the street. You can say whatever you want as you purchase it. You don't need to say it so much here. Um, so, so Paul, um, we want to create additionality, you know, if we're going to be doing recs, that's why we would do class one. We want to create additionality if we're doing local. So no, my question is it, it it I understand that we can't claim it is renewable unless we buy the rest that is how it's accounted for um so are we but but are we contributing to the growth of renewables by saying you know we we want these not those we, we want this supply not that supply or is it really all a wash in that market? Well, so, I mean, that's a that's a deeper question. And I think different people would have, give you different answers to that and that making their own assessments of renewable energy or, and in particular, what creates additionality. So what I can say, so I, without answering your question, because I, I do think they're, you know, sort of strong and legitimate positions on both sides of that question. In this plan, as it's written, you've got complete, you've, you've got flexibility to do either of those things. You can, you can buy if you wanted to, the plan would allow you to buy electricity from a particular generator and the RECs from that generator or buy electricity from a particular generator and not buy the RECs from that generator or do it. What's the more conventional way is you just buy generic electricity in the market, and then you buy RECs. Um, but you can do all of those things within this within this language here. And um, <clears throat> Paul, you can do all those things under the VGE local language, right? You can. Um, so is what's behind your question, Chris? Well, why don't we put electricity and or RECs up in the 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 options above? No, I like it the way it is. Oh. I mean, because in my mind, the only reason we would want to buy specific electricity from a specific person without buying the RECs would, because, would be because that is going to support some project in an unknown way that's local. And us buying the, you know, the brown power off of a local renewable energy source and let someone else buy the RECs somehow is a good thing to do. And so that's what we do through the local. Yes. Um, but the other ones should stay just Rex, because that's how we buy renewable energy. Um, that's their that's their goal. The local one has got a different goal. So maybe that helps us buy local, or maybe we we can't do it that way, but it gives us flexibility. Yes, so that that's that's just right. That's I agree with that a hundred percent. And that is why we phrased it a little bit differently in that local option. For just that reason, with the small local projects, you could you could imagine 
You can imagine just buying the electricity, not the recs, because maybe there's a good rec market for those projects. So you don't need, they don't need someone to buy their recs, um, but you'd still want to present that as a, as a local energy source. So. Right. There's, there's the buying the recs, the official thing. And then there's the practicality of how do you actually flow money to the right place? <laughs> But to go to Adele's initial question about buying directly from wind farms, is there anything in here that would prevent us from doing that to um, for options one, two, and three? No, there's nothing that would prevent you from doing it. Nothing in here that would prevent you from doing it. But we would, but those options would still have to buy uh, the recs to cover the full amounts, whether they buy the recs from the wind or buy it someplace else. If you're buying just the electricity from the wind plants, it's brown energy. So you have to buy the rec <clears throat> in order to buy the renewable energy. Just by definition, not in reality, right? It's just the way the state has done it. As the, you know, every renewable producer has two products. It has electricity, which is as brown as any place else, and it has societal benefit that we call a rec, and we've monetized that. And so if you want to say you're buying renewable, you have to buy the rec, else you're just buying the brown. And since the top three, well, the top two are advertising actually, you know, green power, that's what their product is then they're gonna to have to include the recs. That's a difference between the language of those two options and the budget option. And the local option, which could buy brown if it's local because it might support something. Well, yeah, and it says and or. Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. That's, that's how I understand it. This is really helpful. Um, does anyone have additional questions about this piece? Are we good? I'm just glad that we're recording it. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. This is definitely one I want to go back and listen to again as well. OK, any other questions then? No? I can't really see everybody, so just speak up if you want to say anything. OK. Um, other points then, or is this, this was kind of the crux of what we were mostly looking, looking at um, or had the most questions about, so. Can I just ask a quick question about Cambridge? Am I correct in? Um, thinking that Cambridge just decided to issue RECs altogether and are only buying local projects outright or something along those lines? Um, yes. Yeah, so Cambridge is doing, as a right, has a slightly different strategy. They for their standard product, they don't have, they're not buying additional recs. They do have a 100% green product, which is 100% class one recs. But for their standard, they're not buying recs. What they've done is they've, they have an adder, they're collecting money through the aggregation program. And then they've used that money to build a solar project in the city, which provides recs to the, to the aggregation participants. So they've, they have collected money and they've used it to build the project. They got DPU authorization to do that. They asked for this, you know, they filed their plan, I don't know, five, six years ago when the Department of Public Utilities did approve that sort of thing. The Department of Public Utilities isn't approving that anymore. So if, if unfortunately the specific option that Cambridge is taking advantage of isn't really available for newer aggregations. No. But two months from now, when we're applying, won't it be different? Uh, um, in, in what way? I'm hoping that our new governor 
we'll choose a um, you know choose commissioners who will give a directive to the DPU adjudicatory processes to make greenhouse gases reduction <laughs> something important and that those decisions will be made based on our climate goals. Right, so that could be. Um, so then what we should do, let's look at the, 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 the part of the plan that enables Cambridge to do what they're doing is in the language about their operational adder. So let's look together at that language and see if I can't it's remember broad where enough is. to cover things that a future Department of Public Utilities might approve, even though the current de um, Department of Public Utilities wouldn't approve it. So where's that language? I'm right there. So um, yes, yeah, so it's that paragraph that begins in addition, the paragraph right above that blue text in the middle of the screen. Mm -hmm. Right here. Um, yeah, so that number four there is the language Cambridge has that um, they're using to justify the project there, uh, the local project, building supporting local projects. Um, I, so I did keep that in the plan. I kept it in the plan knowing that at least the current DPU, if it gets before the current DPU, is going to tell us to take it out. But I put it in <laughs> just to the point you were making that maybe we get a better answer um, if we try. So I think we do have, it's, I know it's, these, are, these are short phrases and they, the, the, it's hard to get from them maybe all the meaning, but we've included in the plan that language that would authorize you guys to do what Cambridge is doing. And we can see whether the Department of Public Utilities at the time lets us leave it in or tells us to take it out. Just, you know, uh, a general question about the timing of if there is a change in the DPU with the new administration, what's a likely timeline for things like that to happen roughly yeah so it's a slow one because um for two reasons one um department of public utilities serve um what in government speak they they all are appointed for terms of years their offices don't run coterminous with the governor so the dpu commissioners that were appointed by governor baker will continue into the Healy administration for whatever number of years each of them has left on their term. And then when their term expires, Governor Healy would be able to appoint somebody new. It's also not impossible that some of them would resign as part of the transition, but it, that also certainly possible that it doesn't. So it would, unlike other government agencies where you know Governor Healy will appoint a new you know, revenue commissioner, she'll appoint a brand new, you know, health and human services secretary, a million other things, something like the DPU, she's got to wait until the current commissioner's terms expire before she replaces them. Um, and then the other thing is that with aggregation plans and everything the DPU does, uh, they're sort of like a court and they work based on precedent and decisions they've made in the past. So that decisions involve, evolve over time, but it's rare that you get them to say, to make sort of dramatic changes in the short term. So I would say, you know, they're like the Supreme Court, but of course we know the Supreme Court has recently made very dramatic changes, you know, overturning past precedent, but in the same way that that was a remarkable thing for the Supreme Court to do, it would be a somewhat remarkable thing for the DPU to do. It's a, the the things tend to evolve more than than uh, you know than have dramatic changes one way or the other. So uh, that's a kind of a long way of saying. I'm hopeful that new administration will be helpful for a lot of the things that we care about, but it may not be dramatically helpful fast. Mm -hmm. um, okay. She's going to get to um, replace two of the commissioners. I don't know 
how quickly, but I know that that's um, two for three. Certainly in her first term, so I'll find out. But um, your point that it's in, you know, like a court and precedent matters, um, gives us an opportunity to contribute. I know we want our CCA to start, but we also want the state to move. So I'm really glad that you have certain language in there that you know they'll take out given their current um, precedents. And can we add some more? <laughs> this is our opportunity to push, you know, the whole state forward possibly. What's the worst that can happen? Will they just outright reject it or would they just, it would just prolong the process? Um, well, a, a little bit of both. So, um, and, and trying to think of an example. So uh, well, I'll just get, I mean, it, I'll give one example. So the city of Worcester in its aggregation plan, they they asked for authority to collect an adder and they in their the plan we filed with the DPU said, and we want to use this money to run an energy efficiency program. And the DPU said to Worcester, well, wait a minute, we've never proved that for an aggregation plan. If you want to keep that language in there, you've got to tell us in great detail how you're going to spend the money. And then we're going to look hard at that. And that's going to take a long time. And we're going to see how it compares to the utility programs. We're going to see what the utilities think about it and everything else. And so what they told Worcester was, you know, we 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 we're happy to look at that, but you need to, you know, you'd have to expect to wait another few months for or or more to get your plan approved. Um, more than a few months, I think. Um I think what I've what I've try to do here is include make the plan as flexible as possible without without sort of crossing the line that would create red flags and a bunch of um uh, extreme you know extreme pushback um i think but, number i'm sorry go ahead i was just going to so and though Stephanie, to answer your question, so that like the way it typically plays out is we submit a plan, the DPU will say, ask a bunch of questions about it. They don't just say no. So if we put in something that they don't like, they're not going to say, no, your plan is rejected. They're going to say, they're going to ask you a bunch of questions. They're going to say, what do you mean by that number four there? Tell us exactly what you plan to do. And if we say, well, we don't know exactly yet, but we wanted flexibility, they'll say, take it out or we're not going to approve your plan. Um, but they give you the chance to take it out. They don't just say you're rejected and go go back to the end of the line. Mm -hmm. And okay. so if we said, um, no, we don't want to take that out, then they'll reject it and we have to go back. Yes, right. If they we said need, take it out we, and you don't, yeah, they won't approve it. So if um, we have submitted before those commissioners have been replaced by Maura Healy, so it'll be tricky. It'll just be a timing issue as far as like knowing which commissioners would be amenable to progressive changes. Well, am I wrong, but isn't there a backlog? of aggregations that are waiting to be reviewed or is it just that they've already been in process and DPU is slow in sort of moving them along? I think it's, well, it's the, it's the latter. I mean, there there's one, a couple of aggregations that have been pending before the DPU for two years. During those two years at a slow place, the DPU has looked at them, they've asked their questions, they've asked for plan amendments, that sort of thing. So they've been, they've been wending their way through the process, but there is, at the current, at the moment, there's a two-year-plus backlog. 
So we may, I mean, by the time we even got to a place where we're being reviewed, there might be new commissioners in place. Is that correct? It's certainly possible, sure. Okay, so we could potentially leave this in. And I mean, it sounds like they wouldn't, would they reject the whole plan or they just make us take that out is what it, it sounds just, like. Take that out, right? Yeah, so I mean, maybe we would have to take that out and maybe then we go back later. Is it really hard to go back later to add? Hmm. Like, is it well, impossible? Um, you can uh, you can always amend a plan. Uh, the way amended plans are treated, they're treated like brand new plans. So you get back to the end of the line, but there's not as much consequence then because you already have a, an active plan that continues in place until your amendments get approved. So you can always amend. And if, and if, you know, hopefully, and uh, the, under a new administration, the process won't take so long. Um, and you can always, you know, if if the new commissioners adopt some new policy that CCAs can do some things that we didn't ask for here because we didn't think they were possible, you know, you can amend your plan then to to add in those new authorizations. Okay. Well, I, you know, we've got it in now, <laughs> so I guess we just deal with it as it comes. Yes. I mean, I don't see what other, I don't think we want to take it out. So. No, I think the uh, discussion is whether or not it would be pushing the envelope too far to put other stuff in. Oh, right. Cause Andrew had asked for more. Right. When, when do a, a bunch of small red flags turn into a big giant red flag that the DPU just says, Whoa, set this one aside for the moment. We really need to look at this one. Um, and I think Paul's trying to straddle the fence by putting as much in possible without, you know, going over that line where you just DPU looks at it as well. We have radicals here, you know. <laughs> well, number so for number four already is a bit of a red flag, and to me, it gives us. I think Andrew, you were saying add more. Could we add more? It just seems like number four is adding. You know, would give us the potential to add more, right? I mean, isn't it covered in that? And that particular item. Sorry, I caught you mid bite. <laughs> I don't have a sense of how. Um, <clears throat> I don't have an idea of what more means. Right, because right, well, because you asked if we could add more, so it sounds like. If you don't specifically have a sense of that, and it seems like number four might cover that already. So I did have a specific idea, actually. <clears throat> and that was to um, create a fund, which maybe this is what Cambridge is basically doing. So we can build a capital project fund with an adder, is that like if you don't spend it right away, if you build it up so that you can actually <coughs> pay for a solar installment in town. That the kind of thing that could be allowed under this. Um yes, I mean that is that is what Cambridge did. They didn't you know, let it build up, you know, for a decade, they collected money over a couple of years. And then when they had enough used it to build the solar project. So that is what they, that is what they did there. And the, the key to it from the DPU perspective would be, and why we have that benefit for program participants in there is they're not just building a pro solar project, they're tying it back to the program by saying, okay, the solar project is going to produce recs. All the recs from that project get retired on behalf of the CCA participant. So they, they bring it back. It's conceptually not so different from the standard approach of just buying recs. You're buying recs that go to the benefit of the program participant. It's just that instead of buying recs from an existing project, they collected a pool of money, built a new project, and the 
but they're still taking those recs. So that's the that's the tie back to the program. And that's why that works. We're just creating a fund to support renewable projects without a tie back to the program definitely wouldn't work, you know, almost no matter who the DPU commissioners are, you, you need to have that tie back. So what you just said was they use the funds to build a local project, but then they buy the recs from that project. That's what you just said? I... Well, they they get the right. They don't. They, they don't. Or they get to, the recs. I'm they sorry. They get the recs the from that. They own the project, so right, right. They take the recs and retire them. Yep. Sorry, I. So Paul, I was following you. Go ahead, Chris. It strikes me that the difference, the, the really the only difference between buying local recs, or one of the one of the big differences between buying local recs or buying in the open market, is the price that you pay, and. Um, that's one of going to be because if you're if you say we need to buy these recs locally, you've now got someone who can sell you the recs at whatever price they want to, um, because you've committed to it. Uh, whereas you go out in the open market, you're trying to get the lowest price and you're trying to time it right and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know how. I mean, how does how does that work for Cambridge? Because if they own the system, do they basically can they basically say, yeah, we're going to give away the recs for free? Um, Correct. They're they're okay. well. They're not right. They're not they're not selling the recs. They're what they're the construct is that the program participants paid to build the project, and so they get the recs. Those those program participants get the recs back from the project. So basically, they bought the recs when they built the project. So yes. they the, the project could not have a funding source from selling recs. So it needed a funding source elsewise, and that's that's what they did. Yes, yeah, so that's exactly right. So the project wasn't financed in the typical way, which was based on an assumption that we're going to sell these recs and we're going to you know finance it, get financing from a bank or investors. Right? They didn't do it that way. They they put money in. Um, in the in the narrow case, it's just sort of like the difference between buying eggs at the supermarket or buying a chicken. Cambridge bought a chicken. Right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's a great analogy. <laughs> so why does the DPO not like that? I mean, the only reason I could think of is that buying the chicken is more expensive than buying the eggs. It definitely is uh, more expensive. Um, I mean, that's the only reason I could think the DPO wouldn't like that. But if you're buying local green and you're willing to pay for it, what, what what's the problem? Yeah. So I think from the DPU perspective, um, and I, I don't mean to have overstated their view with when things like number four there have come up since post Cambridge, they haven't said no, they've said, well, tell us exactly what you're planning to do, because they've said, well, we're the, we're the regulators here, we can't just let you be collecting money willy nilly and go off and make your own decisions about how to spend it because maybe what you decide to do would be okay and what you decide to do wouldn't be okay. So we need you to tell us exactly what it is. We're not gonna prove this kind of general authorization. And so when post Cambridge aggregation plans have hit that, it's always at a stage where their plan is brand new. They haven't figured out exactly what they'd like to do. They'd like to get the thing approved and then develop some specific plans later. But the DPU doesn't give them that option. So the, the communities have agreed to take out this general language because they didn't have the, the specifics. Okay, I, I could see a fear of, <clears throat> of, an ag of, of a CCA going out and basically saying, we'll pay you twice what you normally get paid to build a solar array and there's nothing to stop them from doing that. Right, yeah, exactly. Okay. We're running out of time here and I, I wanna um, give us time to take a look at the logos too, is there, but this is really important. So, I mean, if we had to put the logos off, we, we could, I think, and we could just get a response to you. So is there more, conversation we want to have around this draft? Any other questions outstanding for people while we have Paul here? Or any questions that you have for us, Paul? Um, I'll just make two other quick points not to extend that. There, there are some other 
red lines here. I moved a few things around and just cleaned a few things up a little bit, but doesn't the other things aren't really substantive. Um, and then just conceptually, I understand everyone's desire to have like more more stuff in the plan here because you you have important goals for the project for your for your program. You want to push the envelope. And I'm trying not to be an obstacle to that, but rather trying to help us to present it in a way that has the highest likelihood that you'll get the most approved. And I know sometimes that means I'm saying, don't put in this thing that you really want to do. Um, but for what it's worth, my motive is to be helpful to those goals, not to be an obstacle. That's it for me, Stephanie. Okay. Sorry, I was just looking through at what you had just redlined here. Okay. Anybody else or otherwise we can move on? All right. I don't know if we're all just like digesting all this information, so. Well, I'll say that um, I believe I read through this um, when it first came out, maybe maybe, maybe not. Uh, if, if it just came out, <laughs> if I remember it wrong, um, I just remembered kind of agreeing with it. So I'm, I think I'm fine. Although I will take time to reread it again. And if there, I have any further, further questions, I'll pass them on to everybody. Okay. I think that if, you know, if we, as a general principle, it would be good to, like, if there's any forward thinking pieces that we uh, are trying to decide about, um, in general, just put them in, because we don't know the timing of when this commission is going to be progressive. And if we are forced to take them out later, then then maybe we'll do that. So um, towards that, Darcy, and also I'll, I'll mention this, make sure it's in there. I'm pretty sure this is fine. I see one of the ways that is going to be the easiest and probably most acceptable for the DPU for us to support something local are going to be the uh, recs that don't have to do with renewable energy, um, uh, whether it's uh, demand response or the alternative energy credits, which is basically renewable thermal, um, those type of things. They're smaller projects. Um, um, they could be very helpful for our community to, you know, to put those kind of things in. Um, and I think that's going to be simply, you know, maybe buying someone's re alternative energy credits from a solar array that goes on their house. Um, and we get to sell, you know, put that back in as part of it. So Paul, just make sure that that's, I mean, there's a whole slew of them out there. Mm -hmm. They've been adding more and more of them, these alternative uh, credits. And I think that's a, a place we can play where we can really support a lot of local stuff. Um, yes, that's a great suggestion, Chris. I'll, and and uh, I'll, I'll, look at, at, I'll look through the plan and make sure we've got the, uh, the, the, the ability to, to be buying those in new kinds of new kinds of recs and not just the, the ones we're thinking about now. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? I keep asking. <laughs> so I just want to make sure we're really going to, we're okay. So um, I guess, Paul, will you just give us a, you know, go over this one more time, I guess. And I don't know if there are any additional changes from today, but, um, and get us yeah. on, you know, a sort of clean, final draft, I guess. Yes, I will. I will do that. I will go through. We raised a couple of things today. One is the, the low income program, making sure we've got maximum flexibility there. The next was in the different kinds of recs. So make sure we have action, um, maximum flexibility there. And I will, um, I'll get a new draft back to you. Okay, great. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, at least momentarily. 
Um, okay, so I know we have very little time. I guess I'd ask if this is gonna go a little bit over, can folks stay like another 15 minutes just to look at the logos? Yes. Marlena and okay. Marlena and Paul, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, I, I know I have somebody coming by my house um, somewhere between 10, 30 and 11. So I'll just, I'll just have to excuse myself if they do show up closer okay. to 10. Right. Um, all right then, I will, oops, what is happening here? My computer freaks out a little bit when they do updates. Um, okay, logos. All right, I will once again share my screen and I'm just gonna sort of, uh, I had asked people to come up with their top two and I don't know if people actually did. <laughs> so, um, so why don't I just go through and we'll sort of first kind of look at all of them and then I'll just go back and sort of see, you know, we'll just have conversation about where what people feel about each of these that have been provided to us. So I'm going to share my screen again. Give me a moment. OK, so I guess I'll ask like if people have um, either of these as one of their top two. If not, I will scroll down. Um, well, I'll scroll down first and then I'll go back. So just think about what your your top two may be. Could I just ask, is this, this is the logo that would go on the website? This is for the aggregation. Right, but yes. on the aggregation yes. website? Yep. Yes. So yes. Like, how, how will it work with the, um, with the joint powers entity? What we talked about last time was that we would sort of build that off of this because this has to go first. I mean, this is going to be launched soon and I know we're going to launch the alliance as well but um, because this is something that mass power choice is directly working on it didn't really make sense for them to design a, a valley green alliance logo because they're working on the aggregation with us so we can just build off this but we have to do it that's what we discussed last time so will we have two different websites or how will that work um i don't think we um talked about the two i think well there's going to be we're going to have to have two different websites because the joint powers entity is going to have its mm -hmm. own and then the aggregation is going to have its own as well so they they will be two so can um can we just at least focus just on the, this um, logo Can first. Can you scroll up again, slowly back yep. to the pages? Yep. So I was going to just start from the top again, or do you want me to just work backwards, I guess? That's my favorite. Which one? This one? um or this one oh uh, the top one and um and uh, but i would move the v and valley um so that it's centered over the g because at, at the moment there's no reason for it to be indented but any in any case that's my favorite okay so that's on page four I, I could say my my favorite is any time, <laughs> but scroll through. Okay. 
Okay, does anyone, I'm gonna just start this way. Does anyone like either one of these as their top two? Yeah, I, I like. You like these? Mm -hmm. Andra, okay. Uh, is there one more so than the other? I mean, it's just the font really. Yeah, I can't say I see a big difference. go with a designer's choice of in these two okay so and those two are your top two you like either one of these two no one of them is one of my top two <laughs> okay but you don't okay okay so either of those all right i'm just making notes of what people are kind of voting on um any of these three that anyone has a preference for? I like the bottom one. Okay. okay. And this one? Either of these. Well, as I said, the top one is my favorite. Yep, I made a note. Either of these? Yeah, the top one is my favorite. Of this one? Yep. Okay, so page five. I think we're all going to have different favorites. No. I know, it sounds like it. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I actually like these two the best because <laughs> I like the I like yeah. the I like the river in them. It's the prettiest one. I like it. It's my other. Yeah, favorite. I think <clears throat> I think I'm leaning towards this top one myself. I like this font. I would go with that as my second choice. Okay, so page six, number one. Um, hold on, I'm just trying to make a I'd love to hear people's reasons for their top ones. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Um, so, Darcy, your your uh, your preference for these? Uh, either one is fine. And uh, your reason is because. I, I like the river and it feels a little less corporate than the others. Um, but yeah, that's just me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the same for me. I like the um, less <clears throat> animated look. I don't know what, how to characterize it, but the, the reflection of um, water. Is yeah, more natural. Yeah, and for me, I like this top one in particular. I, I do prefer this font, um, but I also like the image because I do feel like it sort of captures the elements of or the essence of the valley. It feels more like the valley to me, whereas the V, like uh, the other one up here, um, feels a little more corporate-y and I don't know. It doesn't feel as accessible to me. So, uh, and okay. The reason, I, the reason I didn't like the, the one with the house is because it looks really familiar to me. I feel like we see a lot of logos with a house like that, you know, for energy efficiency and um, 
companies and stuff. So since we're talking about the house one, which is my favorite. <laughs> okay, I'll move up. To, to me, the house is cozy. It's, it's like, ah, and here's, this, this is only, this is probably something only a geek would, um, uh, energy geek would say, but it doesn't have wind in it. There is no wind in the valley. <laughs> so wind turbines mm. strike me immediately is, get them out of there. <laughs> I know, I, I, yeah. I wonder about just taking the windmill out of whatever one we choose because we are not going to be right. putting wind on our hills. However, so, but aren't we able to buy wrecks yeah. from wind power? Yeah, we'll be. We'll I mean, be that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I mean, you could. There's arguments to put wind in there somehow yeah. if you want to. Right? And we I'm might gonna, buy electricity from wind farms. Right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I, I agree. I, I don't. I mean, I you know, I could be argued to put wind power in for that very reason, right? But I. I like the cozy um, concept, Chris. I think that the house, though, uh, makes it appear that we're targeting residential energy only, um, and so that's why I um, other. I like the logo, except that I feel like it might can narrow people's assumptions about what this is about. Good point. Okay. I, that's I agree, Carolyn. I had the same feeling about it feeling very residential focused. Like all I kept thinking was mass save, like you know, coming and doing an energy audit. It's to and which is to Andra's point yeah. that yeah. it's you know it, we've seen it before. Um, but I do I appreciate Chris your your feeling about the coziness of it. I just feel like I don't know that it captures sort of you know our effort completely. So yeah, I'm I'm. I'm my, my, my primary point, overarching point is what the logo needs to attract people <clears throat> and not just um, uh, the people who want the greenest. You know, it, it needs to be something that attracts everybody um, as, as best possible. So I guess I'll just say that. Okay, besides Chris, are there any other folks that have a preference for the either of these two? Okay, so I'm moving back up here. I guess I would say this is probably my second choice. I, I, mean, I like this one for the similar comments that were made for the one, I guess, on page six, that it sort of represents the valley with water, farm fields that are a little bit hilly also, so represent more hills as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I prefer the top one because I feel like the wind turbine on the lower one just sticks out too much. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that also. Yep. Yeah, that would be my second choice. Yeah, I think mine too. So the, this one is yeah. second choice. Okay. Yeah. I think I'll pull myself out there as a second choice as well. Okay. All right. And we're skipping no one on this one. Anybody on these? Did we lose Tom? Uh, yeah, every once in a while he disappears. Yeah, he's gone again. He's gone. I Sorry. initially landed on this one, but um, I listening to folks comments about it being more corporate and not as um, and the valley, the V not representative uh, sort of uh, not a soft representation of the mountains. Um, I could totally see that. So I'm not, I wouldn't be hanging my, dying on my sword for this. <laughs> okay. It was just sort of my initial reaction. Okay. And was anyone else um, attracted to any of these? I, I don't think there were, there were other comments about these. Okay. And then these two. Just need to step away. I've got somebody walking up to my front door. Just a moment. Okay, Marlene. I think we're getting there. So yeah. <laughs> maybe when you come back. Um, so, Andre, I think these were your your two. Do you still yeah. feel strongly about yeah. these two as your but, first choice? Uh, no, I, I, they, they are equal with the, the last one, which is my other choice. 
Okay. Anybody? Like the agricultural mm -hmm. um, reference. <clears throat> Anybody else on these? Okay, so it sounds like, at least for a second choice, we were looking at this one for most yeah. people, right? Yeah, that one has like the agriculture yeah. and the hills. I do like the idea there. Yeah, I do too. I think like the more we talk about it, I'm seeing I'm seeing that more. I'm going to go down to the one that we talked about earlier. Um, no, it has hills too. It does, but I don't see the agriculture here. Mm, yeah, that's lacking. So for that reason, personally, I would go back to this one. Yeah, yeah I would agree. Yeah, this one. But but the hills in the other one look like the valley. They do, but there's this no look, agriculture. This look, like, this look like our hills, you know. But the it has. Valley. But they're sort of representative, and then it's got an agricultural component to it, so it captures that as well not as pretty i really don't like the water being represented as a you know like children's drawing so we can ask for a blending right we don't mm -hmm. just have to pick these correct yeah so maybe we could say the water <coughs> the water from this one i'm just trying to see how that look you know could look I think that would be a lot of very similar looking lines if we try to combine just my two cents from a design perspective. I yep. think you're going to have a lot of the water's not going to look very distinct, I guess is the point. It's going to blend in because the lines are going to be so similar. Maybe you guys want that, but that's probably what would happen visually. Sorry that I'm. So this, yeah, this water would blend in too much, you think? I, I think it just it will it will not look so distinct. So on the one with the wavy lines, the water is is visible to the eye because it is has a different quality than the more triangular slanted lines used for the valley. But if we use triangular slanted lines also for the water, it's just going to blend in a little more. So it's not going to be quite as obvious that it's water, even though it's blue. It just won't look as distinct. It'll all look a little more, I think blended together if that's what you want but that 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 would be my suspicion is what it's going to look like something to consider but we can certainly ask her to do it yeah i was just going to say could we if we could ask her if we could sort of point out that these two um are the two that we're most drawn to did we say do we say this one or this one i know i preferred this one but yeah. So maybe, so these two are our top two, but we're wondering if there's a way to tweak it a little more. I guess, what, so what we're asking for, what we like in this one are the way the the hills look more like our valley and we like this water as well. It's missing agriculture. But it's missing agriculture. So if there's a way to somehow get agriculture in this one somehow, or to find a way to blend uh, this one with this page for top one. And, and so you say that you're seeing the agriculture here because the triangular lines used for the hillsides look like fields, like uh, cultivated fields? Yes. 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 I think we all see that. And I think we see that because agriculture is a strong component of the valley. So if the designer didn't really mean that to necessarily be agriculture, that's how we're seeing it because that's representative of where we are. So that's why we would like it featured somehow. Okay, yep, that's great feedback. Yeah, and I don't think it has to be, the, the water has to be the same as in the bottom one, but what I'm hearing from Andra is just, it looks too, I'm not sure what the word is. It's, um, you said childish. Like, yeah. Cartoonish maybe. I don't know. Yeah. So maybe there's just another way of representing the water. Although I'm happy with it the way it is myself, but that's the feedback from others. And of these, you prefer the top one um, with the turbine on the hill? Yes, we yeah. don't like this turbine okay. off in the middle of nowhere. And these two, um, they both are sans, I think it's right, it's sans serif fonts. 
Yeah, they're sans serif fonts, correct. Yeah, and, and the other ones all had a kind of either one or the other. Um, so what do people think? Do you want a serif font or not? That's what, see, that's what people seem to be picking before. They seem to be gravitating towards the serif fonts. So, which is what? Um, I think, I think the, the, um, the font that's there now matches the style of the design. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. So there's this, there's the, there's a comparison between the two. Yeah. 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 So on this one, Stephanie, you liked the serif font. I did. I did. Um, but thinking about, I'm looking, I'm going to scroll up again. Sorry. I'm going up and down here, but I mean, I, could we see it with both fonts? So I guess tweak yeah. the design and then show it with both fonts. Yep, yeah. that's what I was leaning toward as well. So and you're really looking for one new concept, two fonts. Yes, exactly. And uh, perhaps um, moving the V so that it's centered over the G. I, there doesn't seem to be a reason for it to be indented. I think, yeah, that's likely her designer's eye and how to how to balance like the space after between the Y and the E, um, to how to center it above the word green. But I can mention that um, the offset is distracting you visually. Yeah, I think it might, if you move it over to the left, it might be too close to the, um, the turbine. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I'm not having the same visual response as Adele is to that. <clears throat> I, I, I sort of see the rationale behind it. It makes sense to me to have it the space the way it is. <clears throat> yeah, I think it would, for me, I, I agree um, with Carolyn. I think it, for me, it would feel offset and there'd be too wide a gap between the Y and the E, that white space. Oh, I think be a lot more white space. Yeah, I think the, the I mean, she can just stretch the font. Um, can we see the um, the bottom one, how, how the words are? I think it's really, I think it's worth it just mentioning it to her because she's a graphic artist, they can do magic. <laughs> yeah. I think I really, I like the font in the top one. This one? Uh, yeah, it just, it, it's. Soft. And it's still, it's still, I mean, the word valley is centered the same on all of them. It's kind of moved to be kind of in the middle mm -hmm. of green. Yeah. yeah. My guess is I didn't ask her about it, but just knowing how she works, she likely tried it left aligned and it just didn't look balanced visually. So she probably centered it to create more visual balance. Yeah. Okay. So if you could, um, I need to wrap up myself because I've got another meeting coming up, but um so if we could just get those um, templates, that would be great, Marlena. And then we can take a look. And I think we can, um, I don't think we need to convene another meeting. We'll just sort of, I think people can just kind of vote on them and get choices back to me and I can let everybody know, or I could do a doodle poll or something with them, figure it out, but we can okay. get back to you. Do you have a timeline on when you absolutely need this back by? Um. So, well, it sounds like I need to get back. The next step is for me to get back to you with a re with revised logos. Right. And then, um, I mean, ideally, I think it would be good to have this on the materials that are presented to the public, um, just so that you're establishing the branding from the beginning. Yep. Um, however, I, I have to check with my designer on her on her schedule right now. I don't I don't know where she is, um, especially with Thanksgiving coming up, um, and when we're targeting the public presentation of the plan. If we have a couple of weeks, then you know we should be able to get through the holiday and get something to you. I I just I don't think I could promise to have a revision to you by Thanksgiving. I don't know, maybe, but I just can't promise without talking to her. Um, but after that, I think as quickly as you could turn it around would be ideal. Okay. Yeah, I think we'd want to turn it around quickly. So yeah, so just when you get it to us, we'll I'll get it out to everyone as soon as I receive it. And we'll work on turning it around within a, you know, we should, I would think we can turn it around within a day or two. Okay. If people really just take a look and get back. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm encouraged that you saw 
some that you liked in general. That's a good thing. Um, so I think we're not too far. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Great. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much, um, Marlena, Paul, for your time. I'm going to stop sharing so we can all appropriately say goodbye. <laughs> so um, really appreciate your time as always. Uh, so helpful. And I think we're probably all going to be, I know I'm going to be going back to this recording again. <laughs> so there was a lot of information there today. So thank you so much. Um, does anybody have any final thoughts before we go? Sorry. Do we know when we're meeting next? Um, I would say probably um, we could meet December 2nd would be two weeks. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, two weeks would be December 2nd. So after Thanksgiving. Is that good for folks? At nine? Yep, that works for me. Does that work for others? Okay. So, all right, December 2nd at nine is our next meeting. So um, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Have a wonderful, safe holiday. And I'll look forward to getting the designs and get them out to everybody and appreciate all your work on that. Great. Great. All right, thanks, thanks all. Thanks Bye. everyone, good to see you. Bye. Bye.